one thing I want to look at now is, um, you know, the commodity complex. I think that uh, it's making a lot of headlines, uh, particularly gold. But uh, for me, commodities generally seem to be picking up a certain amount of steam. Uh, many commodities have started to see increase in demand. Um, some of them have future supply issues that are building. And I think we need to look at that because I think, to be honest, the world is changing. And I think that the climate issues, the demand for uh, climate associated metals, um, the, the shortages that we could see as in, you know, uh, manufacturing picks up. I think it's really interesting that we've uh, seen this um, moving commodities that we've had. So um, the end of the two year rate hiking cycle in developed economies, um, you know, a lot of people see June as the first month of mo most of the major um, central banks cutting, maybe not the Fed. But certainly um, many central banks are, ex banks are expected to cut in June. This could see um, a, a potential move in, in the dollar. We could see commodities move higher on this. And I think increased expectations um, for a soft landing for the global economy are increasing. We're certainly seeing improving data. The, the thing for me is the manufacturing data improving, I think, is very very important as well. And if we look at some of the charts here, we've got copper on the bottom here. You can see this. This is a vitally important um, commodity for um, climate, the um, electrification of, of, um, uh, of railways and the rest of it, all, all piling into the fact that copper is actually in demand. There are some future macro um, supply issues beginning to grow as well. And in some of the soft markets, look at cocoa. We've we've seen a massive rally in cocoa. Um, we've had a poor harvest, lower inventory, slower output, production cuts. The same, th we're having problems with coffee as well. We're seeing many of these commodities start to turn higher. Not all of it is just um, weather related. Uh, obviously with the metals, it's far deeper than that. I think it's more macro than that as well. But these all feed into inflation expectations and inflation data over time. Input costs start to rise. And then we get to a situation where we see inflation start to come back. Um, and we've had three months on the row in the US of inflation going higher. Is inflation beaten? I don't know. But even as these yields rise, we're seeing commodities still rally. So I think these are very important issues that we need to um, focus on. Oil is up over 1% today uh, on, the, on the back of a 20 basis point rally in two-year yields. This is because it's not about um, the dollar or yields. This is about um, geopolitical issues, um, a rebound in China manufacturing data. You can see here on the chart top left here, China's factory output is, is actually picking up steam quite considerably. We're now in expansion territory away from this um, deflationary contraction that we've had for so long. This could be a big demand change uh, in the macroeconomic uh, global economy here. And so I think this pickup in manufacturing demands our attention. We've got a decline in global inventories as well in some of these major metals. And if we look at this chart on the bottom, right, uh, bottom left here, you know, this is trending lower. This is a concern that we've got supply issues, we've got rising demand issues. Um, add to that the geopolitical risks around the Middle East, and we've got ourselves a situation where oil could actually start to uh, impact uh, inflation data, particularly in the headline data. And I think we've seen some of that already, but the data is backward looking, don't forget. So these rises in oil markets are still to impact these, um, the, these data. And I think analysts have recently predicted oil prices could hit between $95 and $100. JP Morgan, I think a few others, Goldman Sachs, looking at much higher prices for oil as demand outweighs supply going into the middle of 2024. It's, it's a disturbing story, but the danger here is that U.S. yields and U.S. rates may have to stay higher for longer. And whilst you would think that was going to impact negatively on commodities, if you look at the supply issues and the reasons why these demand uh, metals may be in demand and oil may be in demand then it can we can get a period where you know the dollar could remain firm us yields could remain higher but commodities are still in demand because the market is actually short of quite a lot of these commodities i think that's part of the squeeze going on in gold and i think realistically it's very hard to suggest that these commodities are all going to turn around and start trending lower again are we looking at a cyclical um, rally in commodities? It's possible.
But again, I think it's worth looking at some of the charts on on this to sort of get a clearer. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks very much, Mario. Um, again, I, you know the the the, um, the demand that's been behind this move is reflected within this positive sentiment and this very strong upside move that we've seen in oil um, developing of late. And it's difficult to stand in the way of this type of price action. Now we have seen a setback, a correction beginning to materialize, but I think you know the important point that that we really need to monitor to the downside within any more extended correction phase is the what is currently standing at eighty three sixteen, which is the Bollinger mid rising Bollinger mid average, and that's I think is probably the important support area within this move because if we do start to see this give way and don't forget it is rising on a day-to-day -day basis so that level will get higher as the market corrects but if that does continue to hold this is still a more positive trending condition and the risk is that we can see further upside beginning to develop within that type of price action so i think this mid average is going to be quite an important focus within the current correction and it may well catch up with price activity as the market moves sideways the average will continue to rise until it meets price activity but if that then acts as a support level and sees fresh upside beginning to materialize I think it's worth bearing in mind that this is still a positive uh, positive trend. The risks are still that downside will be limited within that uh, within that uptrend, and that the risk is we can continue to post these higher highs and higher lows for further extension while this Bollinger mid average continues to hold on a closing basis. So that's oil. I mean, I think uh, what I'm going to do now is hand back to Mo to have a look at the situation for gold and uh, and, and what the outlook is uh, for that. Yeah, let's have a look at the fundamentals. I mean, gold prices have created many of the headlines for the rising commodities, but it's certainly not exclusive. Um, but as you can see here from the chart, uh, central banks have boosted their gold holdings. I think this is an uh, underlying fundamental support for gold. Um, what is the reason for that? Well, you know, since the US decided to confiscate uh, reserves that held by in treasuries by Russia, um, I think other governments like China and many others got a bit uh, worried about that and i think they thought they'd rather have gold that they owned and that they could keep on their reserves um away from the treasury as being a safer uh, investment so i think there's some of that going on but gold is up 13 percent so far in 2024 a very substantial rise i think the market was fundamentally and structurally short um you know for the last two years maybe i think a lot of that is being unwound um so i think you know we've also got um, you know, the fact that we're printing new all-time highs. Uh, on April the 9th, we saw a close of um, 2,365. You know, I think this squeeze could continue, to be honest, but this rising dollar and rising yields could put a bit of a cap on it. But today it's down, but it's not down a lot. Um, so there's obviously something else going on here apart from a dollar issue or what the Fed's going to do. I keep reading that oh, it's because the Fed's going to cut rates that gold's going up. Well, the Fed probably aren't going to cut rates in, in June and gold's still going up. So, you know, I think this has um, got to a stage where gold is seen as a hedge against quite a few issues, inflation, geopolitical risk. Um, and I think the end of the rate hiking cycle for some of the developed countries, but not necessarily the U.S., and I think, you know, there's still risks out of commercial real estate and regional U.S. banks. This rise in yields, I think, um, uh, is a bit of a potential uh, red flag for U.S. regional banks. Um, high yields don't help. And remember, gold spiked when we had the problems with the regional banks before. And I think this is an underlying thing that could be coming back onto the radar. So I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on the, the, the equity performance of regional banks. That could actually boost gold demand. Uh, as we go forward. So, uh, again, I think it's worth looking at the charts. They're pretty difficult to stand in front of at the moment, Rich. Yeah, very much so, Mo. Um, it, it's an acceleration. Uh, it's accelerating higher. You know, you'll notice that we've got um, a classic uh, setup within Bollinger Bands uh, on a daily basis here in that gold is tagging the upper band and it has done for some time and the bands themselves are widening and we're in a bullish trend. So effectively that's saying that we've been in a period of positive volatility 
And that is bullish for gold and, and reflecting further upside risks. Now, we're just starting to see with this setback that's developing today, not this particularly serious, just starting to see the um, the bands beginning to con correct, uh, sorry, contract. And that may well see a consolidation beginning to materialize, but it would still be viewed as a limited reaction uh, within what is still a bullish trend, and that the risks are we can continue to see further upside beginning to materialize. And basically, while we're above the 38% retracement at 2282, this is just a normal correction if we do see downside within what is still a longer term positive trend. So I think, you know, technically, yes, we could see a short term reaction, but the overall risks from a longer term perspective are still more positive. And I think we can still look for attempts to push towards higher levels once we go some way to unwind what are very overextended upside conditions.